This is a training video for using the 3D CAD design environment in Sheet Lightning Pro uh, for creating customized design. Um, most of Sheet Lightning is parametric. You just need to type dimensions to get something, uh, maybe even a whole shoot, which is quite, can be quite powerful. But this is true, the um, 3D customized design for our very original designs. Um, surprisingly, it's easy to use, even though it is a 3D environment. Okay, if we go to File New, press New 3D CAD Design. This is a ballpark size of room we're going to use, and that's the default diameter of new parts that we create. So OK, opens a new design view. Now to create a part, I'm just going to slap things in here just to give you a start to show how it's done. Uh, if I create part, there in goes a new part. Just select two points. This is the part editor. So there it is. Um, if I now I can use zoom view to zoom in on that. I can use the mouse wheel to zoom in and out. I can use the view manipulators to pan it, and I can use the orbit to orbit it. So I can get any kind of view on this I want to. If I press Control also on the orbit, it will keep rotating that around and give me a view of it. So visualization <coughs> is, is fairly easy. You just find a convenient view. Most of the time the, the 3D view is the best thing to use. So I've created one part. If I create another part like this, uh, we need the select mode back here. If I create another part like that and say OK. Now I've put this across that part. Many people try this first and then go weld all and nothing happens. Which is a bit disappointed at. But the reason for that is there's no link between these parts. So there's no intersection. Now if I want an intersection going to delete this part out and recreate it. I need to link to that, so I need to use these snap tools. Snap center line, snap node. Snap node will highlight in green the nodes at the ends. Green means select me. Um, if there's more than one, select one. But what I want here is <coughs> not the node selection, I want the center line. I want to link onto the center of this uh, object. So I've clicked on snap center line, this has turned green. If I move near it and click, it will limit the cursor to that line. So I'm now stuck on the line. I need to pick a position. If I push it to this end, it's going to link onto N2. You see N2 is 0 there. That's the position of the cursor on the line. If I push it to that end, N1 is 0. So it will link to that node at that end. If I go in the middle, it will create a new node at the point that I select and start the new part. And I'm just going to throw it in in a random position without um, selecting a specific position. Now this is going to match, try and match itself to the part that I've linked to when I finish. But And here's the dialog that's doing that. So when you see a dialog come up here, it's kind of an off-screen active dialog, something to do with what's happening on screen. That happens quite a lot in this environment. I'm just going to say cancel to that. Um, because th actually these two are already matched. They're both at the default diameter. Um, now if I press weld all, you can see there is an intersection there. Let's zoom on that. Let's go in a bit further. You can see there's an intersection between those two. Um, and then to unfold that would just be a case of pressing unfold all. And there's those two parts unfolded. Let's delete that view, view back out. So here we have um, two parts linked together. Let's now add a third part and this time as I create a third part I'm going to both give it length and orientation. So here I'm going to say snap to a node and I'm going to choose the node that these two are joined at. So I'm adding a third part that's also linked to that node and that's going to link it to both these other items. Um, I also want it to be vertical, so the way I do that is I choose a vertical plane for movement here, and I'm going to go for the XZ plane. Now that cursor is moving in the XZ plane, it's a little bit difficult to see that, but if I use the axis snap as well, that's brought that vertical plane into that vertical axis. I can switch that off and move again. You see it's moving in a vertical plane there, the XZ plane. But if I use axis snap, it will snap to the vertical or to the nearest axis that the cursor is close to. Let's, let's go out a little bit. Let's go in a bit. 
Okay, now if I want that to be a specific length or height, I look at the length parameter in the dialog up here and just type it in. So if I type 500, that will give it a length of 500. This is now checked to say it's a fixed length. When I move back in here, the cursor still sticks to the axis because the axis snap is on, but the length of the part is limited to 500 wherever I go. So I only need to press again. Part edit comes up before. I say OK and cancel the editing again. And I've got a third part in there now. So if I weld all, that's a three-way intersection between all three of these parts. Now if I want to edit these parts, um, I'm in the select view, I can select any of these and it will toggle them on and off. If I want to get into the part editor to edit their sizes, I would double click and that opens the part editor. I can then choose to change one end or just both ends at once. Let's cancel that. Now I will um, show you how to edit and edit a part and watch the others match to it. Let's, but let's add another part before we do that and show you the node, ma node match and the difference between what we've done here and that. So let's create a new part. This time say node snap and I'm going to snap to this end and pull this part away. Uh, it, again it's moving vertically there. I actually want it to go horizontally. So I'm going to align to axis again and there it's moving in the horizontal axis. and I may want to set a length again, let's say 400 millimeters. Or I may choose, rather than have an axis snap, have an angle snap. And I want to set it to an angle of 60 degrees to, and it, what it's saying here, that select one of me to tell me what I'm trying to set this angle to. Well, I'm going to choose that item. And so I'm saying make it 60 degrees to that. And now you see the angle snap is forcing it into a 60 degree position relative to the thing I've selected. So if I select yes there, OK, cancel the matching again, I put a new part in there at 60 degrees to this line here. If this line was continued, that would be 60 degrees. Now let's edit this part here. And this time what I'm going to do is edit, I could edit one end, but I'm going to edit the whole diameter to 400 millimeters and this says no match so nothing no matching would happen from this but I'm going to change this to match from so when I exit it then says okay shall I match this and I'm going to say yes do match that grow it and turn it now it won't need turning um, but sometimes a match will require an object to be displaced in some way for that match to be made if I say match, then that, that one, grow, turn, match, and that one, grow, turn, match. All those three have been matched to that piece by growing them to a size where they're full size. Of course, they could have been left smaller. These two could have. Uh, and it still would have been a valid intersection. But if this one was left smaller, it wouldn't have worked because it's a bend. So if I go weld all, there we see all that fits together. And as I say, it's quite important that we've got a bend in the section, that, the, that they are matched together, otherwise you get an invalid um, result. Or that if it's a T, that the T is not bigger than the part it's teeing onto, otherwise you get an invalid result. Now when I've got uh, a welded design like this, I can always get back the outline, what's called the outline design, by clicking on this icon here, and that will return me to outline, the outline of all parts. Weld will cut it up again, outline back to the original just cut square ends, so it's showing them just as individual parts. Um, if there's many parts in a design, the weld can take a while, but, but usually it's quick enough to, um, you know, uh, quick enough just to do it there and then. So I'll say weld that up and I can continue working with this. Now let's assume we want to alter this piece um, and we want it to taper down to a certain diameter. Um, we would double click on this to get the part editor up. Click on the end we want to 
fix the diameter for and let's say that is 200 millimeters and then as we say OK um, we want to match this part up to the other so we say OK this moves straight into the matching um, environment and it's saying how do you want me to modify this well I want it to taper into into the linked part to object one so all I have to say now is match and it will adjust this end size of that without changing the size I just altered um, so if I do weld all that fits together fine if I double click on this part I can see that that end is 200 so I'm going to cancel that that's fine it didn't modify that but it did modify the diameter of this end now if I did open this and modify the diameter at this end this has been matched to, to that other part if I change it to say for uh, 20 and then say OK but no matching so I have not allowed it to rematch and then try to weld it now knows that this doesn't fit so you kind of get an invalid intersection it's a, in a bend intersection it must match otherwise it's not going to work properly so I can't treat it as a bend so if I go back to outline if I rematch this and I don't need to go into the part editor I could just say match the selected part taper it that's fine match and now it's matched again and the proof of that will come when I weld it and that's what matching is all about it's altering the size of one part to fit another as we select these parts you see that lots of these things tools become available and are highlighted if we select none then many of them grey out so when it comes to editing things and um, excuse me saying commands on things you have to select them first and then choose the command let's just spin this view around this is where the orbit can come into its own and give you a nice kind of view of what you're doing nice kind of feel and then you can always click back to the 3D design to get back there now that probably concludes a flyby on 3D design basics how to begin there's a lot more to look at there in terms of matching in terms of design in terms of how to manipulate a design once you've got it in a position like that you want to modify it and there are plenty of tools available to do that but we'll cover that in another video